Jeff, and I would like to talk to you about the safety and the use of the router tables here in the SDFWA member shop. We have two router tables here, um, back to back. Um, they're both pretty much the same. They have this, uh, a lift mechanism that allows you to adjust uh, the router bit up and, up and down. Both router tables are hooked up to the same dust collector, so if you're going to be using the router table, you want to make sure that that gate is open for any of the router tables. This one over here is a, a cast iron top. This one has drawers in it, and it's the one where we store all the wrenches and tools and things that you need to install the bits and uh, put the router tables up and down, make the adjustments on them. In the top drawer, we have the wrenches that we use for installing the bits in the collet, and the crank that we put in here and this is how you can adjust the height of the router bits in our anchor lifts that we have. There's also um, spare collets. We have two collets. Router bits come in two different shank sizes, either half inch or quarter inch. And we have collets that will fit either one of these routers, uh, depending on the bit that you're actually going to install. We also have, uh, down in the second door, we have different um, throat plates that also magnetically sit down onto the router lift and uh, different hole sizes in the front depending on the bit that you're actually going to install. You want the, the hole size to be just slightly larger than the bit. That gives you a good surface when you're moving your workpiece um, across the router table and actually cutting. A little screwdriver helps to actually put in this little notch here and lever this up because these are metal plates that are held down magnetically to hold them and they only fit in one specific orientation. There's a little notch here that matches up with a notch on the table. If you try and put it other places it won't work. Just match up this notch to this notch and that will hold right on there. There are some router bits um, in this little drawer here and we also have a much larger collection in the cabinet on the wall and I'll show you some of the bits that are in there. If you need a specialty bit for something, um, you may need to bring that in yourself. If you need something to do drawer, uh, doors and drawers or dovetail bits or something like that, we have basic bits here, but if you need a specialty bit, um, you may want to bring in your own. Okay, we have a cabinet um, full of specialty router bits. Um, it's locked, so you need to ask the shift supervisor um, to get a bit out of this cabinet, and they'll, they'll do that for you. We have a variety of straight bits, um, curved profile bits, and some joinery bits in here also. If you bring your own bit, um, then you'll know exactly what it is and how sharp it is. We offer these as a, uh, as a service you know, to all our shop members, and uh, they're free to use. So you can take bits out of here. We've got ones to do tongue and groove, there's actually a set of um, door panel bits, a matching set um, to do um, rails and styles, cope and stick type doors. There's a whole bunch of profile bits, beading bits, straight bits, dovetail bits. It's a pretty good selection. Another safety thing about router tables. We have the plugs here. If you're installing bits or, or doing any work or installing collets, um, we definitely want the router table unplugged. Plug it in for use, and you can leave it plugged in if you're actually just adjusting the fence or the height. But uh, for anything more, um, we definitely want it unplugged. Okay, once you've selected a router bit, um, you need to have the right size collet. This is a half inch shank bit. We're gonna put a half inch shank collet on here. In order to install it, you need to remove this throat plate and use the crank and crank the router lift basically all the way up so you can get the wrenches um, on the on the collet. The right side collet screws on here. When you put a bit in here, you put it all the way down and then make sure you pull it up. You don't want the bit bottomed out. It won't tighten properly. So you put the bit in, um, Tighten this down by hand, and then it takes two wrenches to tighten the collet around the bit. You want to tighten it snugly, but you don't have to crank down really hard. 
the way the screw threads work, it actually tends to tighten as you use it. So, snug, but uh, not torqued down. You can crank it down. such that the collet is below the work surface. And then we can put on one of these throat plates um, to match the size of the bit. There are two adjustments when you're setting up a router bit. One is the height, which is adjusted by this crank here. And the other is where the fence is located. This is the router fence. Um, this is what guides your workpiece when you're moving it through the router table. The basic adjustments are these two thumb screws, which allow the fence to move back and forth that adjust the distance of the fence um, from the router bit and the depth of the cut that you'll be making. In addition, these two pieces of the fence are loose, can be loosened so they can slide back and forth this way. You want the fence to be pretty close to the router bit up here as you're working, but you can, for a larger bit, you slide the fence out. For a narrower bit, you get it close, but not touching. Okay, I'm gonna set this up to make a small rabbit, which is a, a, basically cutting out the corner of this piece. We're gonna cut up about a quarter inch in each direction. So in order to do that, I need to set the bit such that it protrudes about a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch above the tabletop. So you use the crank to set the, the bit. And once it's in the right place, this is how you can lock, lock it in position. Turning it clockwise to the locked position here holds the bit so it won't move while you're actually routing. But when you're adjusting the height, you want to put it here in the unlocked spot over here. Both of these lifts work the same way. Here, anywhere over here is unlocked. You can actually hear it snap into position when locked. But you want it unlocked if you're actually going to be changing the height of the bit. The second adjustment you need to make is how far the fence is forward or back relative to the router bit. And you can get an idea of what your cut is what your cut depth is by putting a straight edge here and I can pull the fence forward to make that cut a little shallower. One of the things I want to emphasize, if you're, if you're making something that requires multiple passes, you always move the fence back to make subsequent cuts. You may adjust it forward to, to make a shallow cut and you move it back to make the next one, back to make the next one if you make multiple passes. Always move the fence back. Okay, now that we've got the bit set height-wise and the protrusion from the fence, we're ready to make a cut. Just like any of the power tools, uh, the basic shop rule is keep your fingers at least three inches away from any cutter. So I've got a push block, which I can use to guide it in here. And you can also use a piece of scrap wood because if I, get, if I push on with my fingers, I'm actually getting too close to the bit. So let me put my safety glasses on. The switch, um, the way this works, there's a green start button to turn the router on, and then a big paddle that you just have to push on to turn the router off. And make sure your dust collection is open, and we're ready to go. So we have a nice clean rabbit in here for uh, doing butt joints, that sort of thing. If we want to make it deeper, um, I'll go ahead and move the fence back and we can make a slightly deeper cut. You don't want to take off too much on any one particular pass as it tends to chip and splinter. And you also get a much better finish if your last pass is just 
a hair, maybe a 64th of an inch. You'll get a nice smooth finish uh, if your last pass is not taking a very big bite. So I'm gonna go ahead and re readjust the fence back just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and take the second pass. And again, whenever you do a deeper cut, you're always moving the fence back away from you. To take the bit out, um, you go turn this top one counterclockwise and loosen it. And you turn it a little bit more until, you, until it's, it's hard to turn again and do it one last little bit. And that's what releases the bit and allows you to take it out. We're gonna install another bit this time. Um, and this one has a bearing. Many of the bits are bearing guided. And uh, this does a nice profile, so we'll do a, a, a decorative profile on the other edge of our board. Then the, the bit goes in, and then raise it up a little bit before you tighten it. This one will need this throat plate with a larger diameter hole. When you're installing a bit that has a bearing in it, generally the bearing needs to be level with the surface of the fence. And one way to do that is put, put that, this uh, square or straight edge on there and put that right up against the bearing and that's where the fence needs to be. We're also gonna check the, the clearance. This is a larger diameter bit. I need to move the fence, movable fence pieces out to give clearance for that to spin. This is a small enough cut that we should be able to do it in just one pass. demonstrated routing on the edge, and that edge guides against the fence really well. If you need to route on the end of a piece, um, you need some more support. This is not something that you can support just by your hand running against the fence. Not many people know it, but we have a very simple jig for all these routers. It's just a square block. And the way this works is that rides against the fence, and that gives you support for routing along a, a narrow end of a piece like that. So you hold this against the fence, you hold this against that, and then you can route safely. So we'll demonstrate that. This is one where I'm going to do a, a, another little pass, where a second pass will clean this up um, really well. Still a little bit of fuzz on here, but we've got a nice clean, a nice clean corner here.